Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel of College Process. Once again, I'm Ed from Principia Prep, and today we're gonna to be going through all the questions you guys left here on the channel for the week, which I'll be doing obviously every Friday, posting this video, showing you guys here all the answers to all the questions you guys leave on any of the videos you hear we have on the channel. Now, let's start off with, once again, we're gonna follow the same format we do every week on Friday. I will be looking through all the questions here, starting from seven days back, answering them going forward. I will skip over all those statements, obviously. So let's jump right into the first question here. Coming right here about the FAFSA guide, the question is, a parent receives WIC or Medicaid, what section do I click on uh, to, I guess you're looking to see where you put the WIC information or the free reduced lunch or the Medicaid situation on the FAFSA form. Now this question or the questions for these things will only be asked of you if your income is low enough. And let me explain to you what I mean by low enough. Now when it comes to the FAFSA form, it will only ask you questions about federal or state assistance of any kind, by the way. If your income is typically between 45,000 or below, if it's not below 45,000, then it's not going to ask you questions about free reduced lunch or Medicaid or any of these things, by the way, it basically skips it over. Okay. Let's go to the next question here. All right. We have the same questions here from this individual right here who asked three, the same three questions for three different videos. So the question is, do I need to report on the FAFSA company stock uh, that you've purchased? Now, there's various ways this work, but I'll give you like the broad answer for this. Now, obviously, right at the bat, 401k money that you have from your company does not go anywhere on the FAFSA as far as the amount you have in 401k. The contribution you gave last year in 401k does go on the FAFSA, but not the total amount you have in 401k. Now, if you have been purchasing shares within your company, let's say you work for, I don't know, AT&T or 3M, and you've been purchasing uh, company stock through them, then the stock does count. It does go on the FAFSA form, the value of that stock. So it is something you do put on the FAFSA form, yes. Okay, especially since it's not retirement based. If it is retirement based, then you don't count it on there. It doesn't go on there anyway. Okay, let's go to the next question here, which is from Marquise here from, it's in, I guess the same video. I guess I don't know if it copied your, your question twice, but the question is about the, uh, re the refresh start program. Now the program that Marquise is talking about here is essentially a program started back in, I believe April or so. Uh, I'll put a screenshot up here in a moment where if you are in, de in default on your loans, there is a chance to kind of restart them up as far as get get you out of the, 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 the delinquency situation. Now, not every federal loan is eligible for this, by the way. As you can see here, I'm going to put on the screen a screenshot here. When it comes to these loans, the loans on the left here, the ones typically owned by the federal government, are in play and can be utilized for this program. The ones on the right, typically owned by the school or other aspects here too, as you can see here for different programs, are not eligible for this program to restart the whole process of getting you out of delinquency. Now, what you need to do is you need to contact your servicer. Your servicer is going to let you know whether you're eligible or not for this program, as well as what they need from you, because they will need some information from you to kind of restart the whole process up. So hopefully that helps answer your, your question here, Marquise, is that you need to contact a servicer to see, am I eligible for this or not? Okay, so the next question, this person here has a lot of questions here. I'll try to answer them all in one answer here for you guys. It's talking about the student loan, federal direct loans that you guys get, the subsidized and unsubsidized. Now, the question here looks to be about the unsubsidized and the subsidized. So let me address both. When it comes to this subsidized loan, there is no interest accruing whatsoever while the student's in school. And they also have a six-month grace period afterwards. So there is no daily compounding of interest or monthly or yearly. There's, there's no interest whatsoever until the student graduates. Then the interest begins. Now, with the unsubsidized, the interest starts immediately paid back, basically added up every day going forward. So the interest on the unsub starts immediately from day number one. OK, now for both loans, technically right now, there is no interest rate. There's no daily increase. There's no monthly. There's no yearly because everything is in forbearance right now. All the federal loans, sub, unsub, direct, the parent plus loan, the grad plus loans, all of them are at zero percent rate right now. So there is no curing. Of, there is no growing of the ink of the interest whatsoever on these loans right now. OK, hopefully that answered your question. Let's go down to the next questions here. The okay, next question here is how to complete the massive promise note entrance interview. The question is only I apply for a master promissory note. That's what MPN stands for is when I accepted into the school, right? Yes. So you only do when you're going into a college, if you want to take out the federal loans, you have to see, uh, obviously have to do the FAFSA form to get you eligible for the loan for them to offer to you. But then for the school to be able to accept the funds from the federal government, essentially, you have to do in addition to the FAFSA and accepting the loans on your award letter, you also have to do the, the master promissory note and entrance counseling paperwork. Both those things have to be done in addition to the signing off on the award letter and doing the FAFSA to be able to get the student loan, the student loans given to your school to pay for your education. Okay, let's go to the next questions here. Okay, let's see here. So the next question, or I guess this person has two questions here. I'll just read both of them here. How do I get help finding scholarship assistance? 
we actually have uh, in this video you're watching here, it actually talks about getting scholarships. I would not be looking to do or paying anyone for assistance for getting scholarships based on the fact that all of these are online and they're free. So I would just utilize the video we have here explaining what sites I would go to and just utilize those sites. I would not be paying anyone for scholarship assistance here. And the next question here, will 1D with 4.0 affect my college acceptance or is it a case by case basis? She is retaking the class and she's up to a B. I mean, ideally, the I don't know your entire situation here, but if the grade is being replaced in the sense that it's completely gone from the transcript, that's not going to have an issue because it's going to be replaced in the transcript. It's going to be wiped off there. It will not show. Unfortunately, though, some schools do show both grades. So one of the things you need to know is, are they showing one grade or both grades at the high school level? It's, you know, it's a big deal to know. If it's being erased, perfectly fine. No one's ever going to see it. If it's being replaced, but they see that they replaced it, another grade being a D, then it's a little bit more tricky, especially based on the higher tier schools, the more reach schools. There's basically two classes of thinking here. Right off the bat, first is looking at the point of view of a student went out and redid the class. So it did affect them in the sense that they did go out there and get a better grade, which is a great situation to have. Or the second way is they did get a D. So there's really no way of knowing which way they're going to look at it, unfortunately. But the steps you're taking to retake the course and get a better grade will definitely help your cause either way, by the way. This will be the last question here just an hour ago. Okay, and then we got the last question here from Cook about the getting the FAFSA IDs. The question seems to be here, since they're using the, the father's tax return, you have to use the, the father's FAFSA login. So when you're doing the FAFSA, you need two logins. You need one login for the student, obviously a student going off to college, and the second login has to be the parent. In this case, it looks like there may be a separation situation or a divorce situation. If you're going to be using the other parent's information, the second ID for the FAFSA to be able to sign the form and send it out must be that parent. So if you're going to be using the other parent's information, you must sure, make sure to create their FAFSA ID. If you're the other parent, you cannot create your ID and use their tax information. It's not the way it works. You can't go both ways. You can only use the parent's tax information for the person that information is being used on the FAFSA form. So if mom's using her taxes, mom fills out the FAFSA ID to be able to fill out the, to be able to sign the student's FAFSA. If you're using dad's tax information, it must be dad's FAFSA ID. When I mean the person's ID, by the way, I mean that person must use their first name, last name, social and birthday to create that account. Okay, and that looks to be it guys. Thank you once again for all the questions. Once again, we're gonna be following this format every Friday. I'll be posting the video, answering all your questions on here. Once again, thank you everyone for watching the channel and supporting the scholarship program. We definitely appreciate everyone out there. And I'll screen my contact information if you guys do need any assistance or any help. I do sit down with families on a one-on-one -on -one basis. That's my cell phone number on there, so it's very easy to get a hold of me. We can sit down, look at your information, and I can help you guys out for whatever help you guys need. And all that being said, thank you once again for watching today's video. Once again, my name is Ed from Principia Prep.